Hey guys, it's Becky from Bama, and today we're going to be talking about my favorites from 2018. So first of all, I want to start with beauty products. Most people that do videos like this end up talking mostly about beauty products, so I wanted to let you know the ones that I'm really loving at the moment. And let's start with makeup. So the very first thing on my list is this NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. Let me get it a little closer where you can see. Um, I use the color Chantilly. This is $30 at Sephora. And I love it because I have um, very dark circles under my eyes. I'm 43 years old. I sleep with a five-year-old in the middle of my bed. So um, as you can imagine, sleep is not the easiest thing for me. My eyes end up looking really tired. I get really dark circles. And so this is just a really good concealer. It doesn't cake up. It doesn't seem to like get down into those fine lines. And it does a really good job of just lightening and brightening the under eye area so that I look like I may have actually slept at some point in my life. The next thing is a blush and highlighter palette. I actually just got this pretty recently, but I'm in love with it. It is the Kat Von D Fetish Palette. Let me get it closer so you can see. It's really cool packaging. And then you open it. I don't want to like make a mess here and this is what it looks like on the inside so those top three shades right there are actually highlighters and then the bottom three are corresponding blushes so like right now I am wearing the middle shade it is called Salem and the highlighter that goes with it is called magic and so I have the blush on and it looks a little darker on camera than it is in real life because I have really bright lights on me. It doesn't actually look as dark as it is on camera in real life. But I really like it. It's kind of a pretty like peachy neutral shade. Sometimes if I'm wanting to go a little pinkier, I will wear um, this pink one. It is called Telepathy and Coven. I mean, they're kind of like freaky names, but I love the product. And then the ones that are more the plum, kind of purpley side over here um, are Rose Shock and Bathory. I don't have glasses on right now because I'm trying not to wear them because I don't want the light to reflect in them and be very um, distracting to you guys. So if it looks like I can't read, I promise I can read. I just don't have my glasses on. But I am loving this. I love that the highlighters actually correspond to the blush. So instead of having a random highlighter shade that's just supposed to go with every look that you have, you actually can match it to your blush, and I love it. So most of the time, like I said, I wear these middle colors, but I also wear the pink some. I haven't worn the purple really yet. I've used the highlighter a little bit on my brow bone, but I haven't actually worn it as a highlighter yet. But love it. And I used to always wear gator wings from the Swamp Girl, Swamp Queen, Swamp Queen palette. But I have hip pan on that. And as far as I know, they're not making that palette anymore. So I had to find something new. Um, the next thing is this NYX Liquid Suede Cream Lipstick. The color is Run the World. So I used to always really want to wear like a blue or a silver or a purple lipstick and I couldn't really find one that I liked that I felt like suited me. I always ended up looking really pale, really dead, super goth and that's not really my look. I like that look but it's not a look that I can really pull off. And then I found this. This, it's very inexpensive. I forgot to tell you the, um, the Kat Von D Fetish Blush Highlighter Palette. I got it on sale at Sephora for $21.50. This is actually $4.89. I love it because it lasts all day. It does not dry my lips out. Um, it's not sticky. A lot of the cream lipsticks like this I find are really sticky and they stay tacky all day. This one does not and it's less than $5. And I love this purple. Let me get closer and see. But I feel like it's like a really nice purple. And it doesn't look 
so shocking. It's not like I don't want to wear it just to be shocking. I want to wear it because I like purple and I feel like this looks more like an everyday lip color that you can wear and people won't be like, oh, you have purple lips today and it just looks really nice. The next thing, and this is something that I have only really gotten into in the last couple of years and that is my brows. So all through my high school years, college years, I had really thick, really dark brows. I didn't really have to do anything to them except like just keep them waxed because they were very full and very dark. Well, as you get older and your hair starts to lighten naturally, sometimes you have to make adjustments to your routine. And one of those things that I've had to start doing is filling in my brows because if you haven't gotten there yet and you don't know this yet, when your hair starts to turn gray, it's everywhere, including your eyebrows. So one or two of my brows will be just white and it'll look like a bald spot because it's so light it'll like kind of blend in with my skin tone so i have started using the revlon color stay brow kit this little guy right here and i use it in dark brown this guy is eight dollars and 16 cents and it's really cool if i open it up here you can see it's got a little spoolie brush to like brush your brows out and then it's got the little brush to put on your brow color so this down here is actually like a brow gel so you can put it on there and it kind of like holds the shape of your brows and then you can color them in with this powder right here there's no fallout it matches my brows really well and I feel like it's a very natural look. I don't like it when it looks like somebody took a Sharpie and like drew that line on. I want a soft line. I don't want like really hard edges. And I feel like that's really soft and works out really well for me. And the last thing that's kind of in my makeup bag, it's not really makeup, but it's in my makeup bag. And this is something that my husband got me for my birthday this year and I love it and that is a fragrance. It is Clinique Happy Heart. Backstory on this, I used to love wearing Clinique Happy, and it was one of my favorite scents of all time, and my husband is allergic to it. So when we got together, um, no longer wearing Happy, because I love him and I don't want him to not be able to breathe when he's around me. Happy Heart is a little bit of a warmer fragrance. It's not quite as strong as the Happy. And I tried a sample of it and let him smell it and he didn't have a reaction to it. So he got me a bottle of it and now I wear Happy Heart instead of Happy. And I'm one of those people where I will get a bottle of perfume. It will last me an entire year. And then after a year, I'm tired of it and I go to a different fragrance. So this will probably be the only year that I wear it for a long time. Um, like last year was Hypnotic Poison. The year before that, uh, I wore something called Layla that's from Norway that I got at Epcot. Um, but every year I like to change and just be a little different for the next year. But for this year, my favorite is Clinique Happy Heart. So the next couple of things are more in the line of skincare, but they're not like facial products. They're more specific to me skincare. The first is h2 ocean if you get anything pierced you need to get this this is like let me see ten dollars and 36 cents on amazon the clinic happy heart by the way is 52 dollars for a 1.7 ounce which is this guy right here which is pretty big that's a pretty good price for that large of a bottle of perfume but this right here is ten dollars 36 cents it will last you the entire time that you have to care for whatever piercing it is you get but I first started using this when I got my belly button pierced belly button piercings take a really long time to heal they're considered a surface piercing they stay red and gross for longer than many other piercings and I was doing the like salt soaks every day I was cleaning it like I was supposed to and it still just felt like it was taking a really long time to heal and it was really time consuming to do all the care that I was doing and I read somewhere about this stuff and it was like magical they the people that wrote reviews for this loved it and it's literally just a saline solution it says it has sea salt and lysozyme 
and it's a sterile piercing aftercare spray. You can use this on body and oral piercings. So I first started using this for my belly button and I promise you after using this for like two weeks, my belly button was healed. And I mean, I'd already had it for a long time, so it's not like this healed it, but it no longer had any problems after I started using this. Um, I recently got my nose pierced. You can totally see my nose piercing right there. And the same thing for it, you can do the like sea salt soaks. Um, you can take a cotton swab or a cotton ball and dip it in your sea salt water and like hold it on your nose. I literally will just spray this either like directly on my face, which if you do that, be prepared. It's going to like get this whole area, not just right there but like just to let it get really wet with it and then just kind of like take a q-tip and wipe off around it to get any crusties off that sounds really gross or i can just spray this on a q-tip until it's like soaked on the end of the q-tip and use it to clean you can clean the inside and the outside with this stuff and i've had no problems lots of times with a nose piercing you hear about people getting like the little keloid bump right at the top or you hear about people getting um just red and nasty around it or they're like crusting constantly I've had no problems and I even you're supposed to wear your piercing for a few months before you change it I even changed it to a hoop I originally got the stud but I knew that I wanted a hoop and so my plan was just to wear the stud until it felt healed enough to change which in a month it felt pretty healed and so I put the hoop in I've had no problems no bumps no redness nothing and I accidentally got it caught on my glasses one day this is awful I was taking my glasses off and it got caught like the little stud got caught under my glasses when I pulled them off it just ripped it out and it turned so red and angry at that moment and I thought oh my goodness I'm gonna get the bump it's gonna be awful it's gonna take weeks to get rid of sprayed it with the sea salt spray the H2 ocean no problems second thing for piercings that I love this came from Rite Aid. It's actually Rite Aid brand. It was like $9.99, I think. And that is this 100% tea tree oil. Get it close where you can see. Just the Rite Aid brand. This stuff is amazing. So if you get a piercing, do not use this just as your daily care. But if you do something where you do cause a lot of trauma, like when I ripped my glasses off and it pulled off my nose ring, you can take just a little bit of this, dilute it with a little bit of the saline solution and just tap it. Don't get it in the piercing hole, but just get it around the piercing and it dries it up. Like anything that might be trying to cause a bump or anything like that, it'll just dry it up, dry it out and you won't have any problems. Now, if you use this on a completely healthy piercing that you've not given any trauma to, you are likely to cause the bump by drying it out too much. Over drying can also be a problem. So like I said, if you don't have to use this, don't use it. But if you're going to get a piercing, especially like a nose piercing, I would suggest having this on hand just in case because I feel like this is a lifesaver. The next couple of things are hair products. The first is really inexpensive and the second one is really expensive. So I'll start with the inexpensive because that's how I generally roll. And that is the Garnier Fructis um, Flat Iron Perfector Straightening Mist. This stuff is $7.68. And it's awesome. You spray this on your hair before you use your flat iron. And your hair is just shiny. It's a thermal protectant. So it actually protects your hair. And I love the way it smells. It smells good. Smell it. it. Smells good, right? And I love it. For the price, you can't beat it. The next thing I'm going to show you, I had no idea before I went to make this video how expensive this stuff is. Someone gave me this. I don't know how they're buying their hair products, but a friend of mine gave me this to use on my hair. It is a dry texture spray, so my real hair is pretty short. It's like it's right here, and so a lot of times if your hair is really short and you over fix it, you get that little old lady like helmet hair thing kind of going on. And so what I do with this is I just spray it on my hair and then like kind of piece through my hair to make it more PC, more chunky, and it makes it more youthful, gives it a more like trendy look. It's the Umberto Beverly Hills Dry Texture Spray. This stuff, I looked it up on Amazon. Y'all, I would never pay this much. The cheapest I could find it for was $57.48 for this size right here. $57.48. It makes me terrified to use this because once it's gone, I will never buy more. But it is one of my favorites for this year because 
I mean, it does a really good job on my hair. If you have a lot of money to spend on your hair, I highly recommend this because it works. The next thing is the New Ape Beauty wig stand. This guy right here. These things come in a six pack. Um, the six pack I got had two pink, two black, and two blue. And it was $13.99 for six of these. And so I have a little table with all of my wigs sitting on the table and I display them on these and they're really nice. Um, they are way better to me than the styrofoam wig heads because you don't have to worry about any of the pieces coming off or your kids like or pets or anything like scratching them and getting styrofoam everywhere. And they're just kind of like real modern looking and I really like them. And that leads me to the next thing and that is this it's V Bing. It's like a V B I N G capital B. Um, pink wig. This wig. I love it. I wear it all the time. Um, it was only forty two dollars and ninety nine cents. So less than forty three dollars. I got this wig. I wear it all the time. I love it. I wear it to church, I wear it to the store, I wear it out to dinner. It's amazing how many people think it's actually my hair because it's the lace front. I've done a little work on the part here to make it look a lot more realistic and I love it. I actually have another new wig that I just recently purchased that I've been wearing. I'm not gonna call it a favorite yet because I haven't had enough time to really see how it's gonna hold up but I'll put a picture right here and I'm also loving it and it was also less than $40. It was like 30 something dollars. So if you really want to try the wig life, you can go on Amazon and find some amazing lace fronts for $45 and under. So don't feel like you have to go spend $2,000 on a Remy human hair wig that you can heat style and everything else. Like this one came with a middle part, but it was lace front all the way around. So I was able to change the part um, I have it right now pulled back in a scrunchie. Like you can style them. I love that it's got a dark root because if my own hair sticks out a little bit, it's not a big deal. And this wig has been like life changing. And if you are worried that you're gonna go out in public and people are gonna know that you're in a wig and people are gonna make fun of you, two things I would like to point out. Number one, most people, if you wear it correctly, will not even know you're in a wig. People that know you, obviously, will realize that it's not your real hair. People that saw me a week ago and my hair was this long know that my hair didn't grow out this long in a week. But people that don't know you will have no idea that it's not your real hair. Most people are not studying you hard enough to determine that you're wearing a wig. Second of all, most people, even the people that kind of jab at me a little bit that are my friends, they like it. They think it's fun that I don't care what other people think about if my hair is real or not and that I just wear what I like and I think it looks good and it doesn't bother me that people know that it's not my real hair even if they know it's not my real hair because first of all it's pink so it's probably not my real hair I wish my real hair was pink I wish I was that cool it used to be pink but it's not now but most people seem to just like it because it's who I am and they like me so if you have friends that like you they're gonna like you no matter what that you wants to do right so the next thing is clothing. I only have two items on the clothing list. I'm not really that into fashion. I love clothes, but I just don't buy a lot of clothes. I have five children. I buy them a lot of clothes. So <laughs> I'm not going to bring them in here and show you the fashion that I've bought them though. So the first is this denim jacket. I got it at Target. It is the Universal Thread Freeborn Jacket and it was $29.99. So less than 30 bucks for this denim jacket. I really like it. I live in Alabama, so it is January 1st and it was 72 degrees today. So I don't really have a lot of call for like a really big thick jacket. I have one because I get cold easily, but it stays pretty mild here throughout the year. We have a couple of really cold days, but for the most part, it's pretty mild. So a little denim jacket is exactly what I need. Um, I love to go outdoors. I love hiking. I love being out in nature. My job actually requires me to be outside at all times. So the other thing on my clothing list is this fanny pack. It is 
on Amazon. If I didn't mention this, this is $29.99. I think I said that. Um, $29.99 for the jacket. This sloth fanny pack, which is waterproof, was $16.95 on Amazon. And I just want you to see, it has different sloths. This one's dressed like the Dalai Lama. That's an astronaut, a different kind of astronaut. This guy's in like a tuxedo. I love this. First of all, fanny packs are back in style. But I realized that as a woman in my 40s, when I wear one, it probably still is not gonna look stylish. It's gonna look like I'm just like an old lady that started wearing them in the 80s and still likes them, which is all true, but they can still be stylish. So I got one with sloths all over it. One, because I love sloths. Most likely one of my next tattoos is actually gonna be a sloth. And then also I got it because it's functional. When I'm at work and I need to have rope or a knife or the things that I have to use for my job on me, I can keep them in here. If I'm hiking or jogging and I want to have my phone on me and I don't have pockets because, believe it or not guys, leggings for ladies generally don't come with pockets. And I have one of the big iPhones, like the big iPhones, so even if it did come with pockets, it may not fit in my pocket. This, I don't have to worry. I can put my little fanny pack on. Funny, they call them fanny packs, I think, because you're supposed to wear it over your fanny. I wear mine right in the front. They actually make these that look like a beer belly, and I've played with the idea of getting one since I wear them in the front, and it would look like a big beer belly, but I'm having to weigh my love for humor against my husband's ability to get embarrassed by his wife, so I may not get that. I might. I don't know, but for now, the sloth fanny pack is in the lead. The next three things I'm going to tell you about are my favorite apps of 2018 that I have really loved. The first one is called Ambient Mixer. So Ambient Mixer is an app where you can, these different people have made all of these different like background noises, ambient noise, if you will. And you can choose one of these and just listen to it on your computer or your phone while you're studying or while you're relaxing or while you're reading. Some of them, my favorite is Mr. Tumnus's house. So if you love the Chronicles of Narnia, you know who Mr. Tumnus is. And there's one that sounds just like the background noises in his house. You hear like a pan flute, a fire crackling, a tea kettle goes off. Like it's really cool. It's very ambient noise. Um, there's one that's like the Ravenclaw common room. If you're studying and you want to feel like you're studying at Hogwarts, you can be in the Ravenclaw common room. There's one that's like a Dungeons and Dragons tavern. Like there's all kind of things. Um, some of the weirder ones are things like sleeping next to Dean Winchester, which sounds kind of Stanish, kind of stalkery, but if that's what you're into, there's an app for that. So Ambient Mixer, it's free, highly recommend. You can even customize the rooms. You can make your own, or if you're in Mr. Tumnus's house and you think the tea kettle is too loud, you can turn it down, you can turn it off. So it's really cool. Um, the next app is called Bestie. The Bestie app, is basically an app for perfecting your selfies. I don't wanna seem like a shallow vein person, but I like to look good in my selfies. If I'm posting a picture on Instagram, I don't want to look like I'm tired or like I have wrinkles or like my teeth aren't as white as they should be. So this is an app, it's also free, that basically you take your selfie, you put it in there, and you can do things like smooth out your skin, um, make your eyes clearer, make your teeth whiter, all these cool things that we want to do to our faces you can do in the Bestie app, and then you can post your selfie and not worry about the breakout that you had earlier today. And then the last one is called Retouch. Retouch, though it sounds like it would be for your face, since I'm a lady and I just told you about the Bestie app, is not. Retouch is actually really cool. It takes things out of your photo. So say for instance, you take a beautiful photo on the beach and it's beautiful. You've got the waves, you've got the seagulls, there's like a sailboat out, but over here in the corner, there's a trash can. And this trash can just ruins your picture. With the Retouch app, you can actually just color over it and then hit go or whatever it is that you hit and it'll take it away. So it basically clones what is around it and sometimes it has a hard time if it's like a very busy picture, but usually I have found it just takes it right out. I did one picture where I took a picture of a house and it had big power lines on it and I took out the power lines and you could never tell that they were there. 
Um, I had one where me and my son were at the World of Coca-Cola in Atlanta and there were a bunch of people behind us in the background and I got rid of all those people and turned them into grass and sidewalk and it was really cool. So the Retouch app is actually $1.99, which I think is a great deal because you can take pictures that would be ruined by traffic signs and garbage cans and porta potties and power lines and turn them into really good photos that you could frame. The next thing that I wanna talk about is my ukulele. So this is a Hilo ukulele. Um, I do believe it's named after a place in Hawaii. And I've got a little Totoro vinyl decal on the back that I got from What The Fandom, which is an Etsy shop that my friend runs that's amazing. But I decorated it with my Totoro. And I play this guy on our podcast. If you listen to the What The Fangirls podcast, I play the... Um, intro song. So it's just I think I need to tune this guy. He sounds kind of out of tune. But I actually got this in Gatlinburg. We went on a family vacation to Gatlinburg. And every time we go on a family vacation, I get a souvenir. And for my souvenir, I was like, what better souvenir of the mountains than a little ukulele that I could sit around and play mountain music on? So I got this guy and it has been a source of joy for me. I love playing the ukulele. So he had to make the list. Um, the next thing I do not have with me because it would be really hard to set up here, but I still wanna tell you about it and that is my hammock. I have a bare butt hammock and straps and the straps are really cool because you can wrap the straps around the tree and not have to tie your hammock to the tree. So the straps, look kind of like a daisy chain if you go climbing and know what that is. But you wrap the straps around the trees and then you can just clip the hammock on with carabiners. It is so comfortable, it is so lightweight and easy to carry and I love it. I have used it in our yard, I have used it at work on my break, I have used it on vacation. Um, it's great if you need a hammock, it's way cheaper than like an Eno, so I highly suggest bare butt hammocks. By the way, none of this stuff is sponsored. These are just things I really like. I would love it if one of these things wanted to sponsor me, but that ain't my life right now. So these are just things that I really like. The next thing is, oh, I didn't tell you how much those things cost. I'm being terrible at telling you the prices, sorry. The ukulele uh, was $37. The hammock was $25 and the straps were $23. So even with the straps, it's still cheaper than an Eno. The next is my wireless headphones. I wear these guys when I'm working out. If I'm just watching YouTube videos while my kid's trying to play a video game really loudly and I can't hear it, I'll put these in. If I'm trying to edit one of my own videos and I don't want everybody in the house listening to my annoying voice really loud, I'll put these in and edit. These are the Bose Sound Sport headphones. They were $149, so They've got this little clip right here in the middle so you can clip them to the back of your collar. And then they're very comfortable. Let me just show you what they look like up close. So that's how you turn them on. And then you've got a little charging port right there. This is all your buttons for your volume. I also have a pair of Shure SE215CL sound isolating earphones that were $89. And those are my favorites for um, my in-ear monitors when I'm singing on the worship team. So on our worship team, like many worship teams, we have these things called avioms that are like in-ear monitors. So instead of a monitor on the floor that plays sound where everybody in the room can hear it, it just goes in our ears. So I can turn up in my ears just the things that I need to hear and turn down the things I don't. So we also have a click track running in our avioms which is just like a metronome that keeps us on the beat that the congregation can't hear but we can hear it see i'm sharing all the secrets with you and for that i use the sure headphones and they were 89 dollars, and they are awesome they're kind of a starter in-ear headphone but they get the job done and they're exactly what i needed 
Okay, we're getting down to the miscellaneous now. We're almost to the end. Thank you for sticking it out with me. Um, the Momiji dolls. I have said that I want to collect them. So far, I only have two. So, I don't know that I would say I'm a collector yet. I have two. But one of my friends, Christina, found out that I wanted to collect them. And she actually bought me my first Momiji doll. And it was BFF Dinah. Let me get her closer so you can see how cute she is. So these Momiji dolls, they're message dolls. So they actually have a little hole in the bottom with a little sheet of paper where you can write a message to someone and put it in there. And they're really cute. And they came out with they came out with several of these a year. This one was $21.95. So they're kind of expensive for a little wooden doll. I do believe this is wood. Um they're adorable. They have them in all kind of different costumes. All different ethnicities all different little facial expressions they are adorable I would love to have all of them but that would be so expensive the other one I have is actually a little Japanese momiji girl that has little puffs and a little rainbow shirt and she's super cute also um, many of you know one of my most popular videos on my channel is a how to start collecting Funko Pops video and this year, my favorite Funko Pop that I got was $9.48, and it is Rainbow Bright and Twink. And look, she's got this little stand that she can stand on. That's like a little rainbow. And she's just adorable. And Twink is adorable. And I think the reason I love this so much is because I am a child of the 80s. I was born in the 70s, but I grew up during the 80s. I was a teenager and an elementary school child in the 80s and Rainbow Bright was a huge part of my childhood and I feel really nostalgic when I see this. I had the Rainbow Bright doll. I had Rainbow Bright coloring books. I watched the Rainbow Bright cartoon and so this is just like a piece of my childhood and I love it. The next thing is the thing that I keep looking at the prices on the whole time I'm doing this video and it is this notebook. It's a Snow White journal. It was about $12. I couldn't find it on the website, so I'm not sure exactly how much it was, but I think it was about $12 at Books A Million. And it is Snow White. It's just a plastic cover. It's like not super expensive, but it's got all these little tabs that are actually the dwarfs. So like when you open it, the pages have like there's Dopey. And each little tab opens up to like a different little scene. And I just thought it was adorable. And I use it for the podcast and for my YouTube channel to write down ideas, to write down things like facts when I need to know them, like the prices of the items so that I can tell you what they are in case you want to get some of these things. And I just love this little guy. The next thing, this is important for me. I've already told you I sleep with a five-year-old in the bed. You see these two trees behind me that are lit? Those stay on all night. Um, those are his night lights. And even though they're like twinkle lights, two of those right by the bed is a lot. So I have this Bedtime Bliss sleep mask. It was $12.90. It came with earplugs. I have since lost said earplugs. But the earplugs were cool. But do you see how it's like molded? Like it holds its shape. And so like it doesn't even touch your eyeballs because these are like molded out cups. So when you put it on, it doesn't touch your eyes and it's super cool and it comes in very handy. I imagine this would also be good for traveling if you were somebody that takes a lot of overnight flights or something like that. This would be great to kind of like block out the world, but I love these things. Um, the last two things are my wall calendar. Um, it's kind of a mess over here, but I'm gonna turn you anyway and show you my wall calendar. This is for December. This dry erase calendar, it keeps me organized. I have different colors over here. Oh, that calendar, by the way, was $14.99. That was a great $14.99 I spent because that thing keeps me so organized. And it's also really good because like if my husband doesn't know what our plans are for next week. Like if he doesn't know what I have going on Thursday, all he has to do is come look at the calendar and I'm gonna have written it on there. 
Then the last thing, and this was something that I had wanted for a really long time, and it's life-changing and I love it, is the Studio Ghibli collection. So you guys know that I love Studio Ghibli movies. I literally, my last tattoo that I got, which I'll show you guys an update today while we're talking about it, was a Totoro tattoo, which is the big star of Studio Ghibli. But for $59.99, you can get 17 movies. I don't think that's the entire collection, but it's a really good chunk of the Studio Ghibli movies, and it's all the really popular ones like Totoro, Ponyo, Princess Mononoke, Grey with the Fireflies, which is the saddest movie I have ever seen. It's beautiful. I encourage you to watch it, but I'm just telling you, have the tissues ready. To be animated, it is literally the saddest movie I've ever seen, but it was so beautiful. But it's great. My son turns on Totoro every night at bedtime to watch as we fall asleep. It's kind of like his comfort, which is why I got the Totoro tattoo. But it was a really great purchase. And for 60 bucks for 17 movies that are beautiful. They're, I like them better than Disney. And I will give you, I told you guys that I would give you an update on the tattoo. So that's him now. I love him. Those are my favorites for 2018. I can't wait to see what 2019 has in store. Um, I know a lot of people do these videos monthly. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. If instead of like just doing a giant video at the end of the year, you'd rather see every month. These are like my five favorite things or something like that. Let me know. Maybe that's something we'll do in January. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos on this channel, please subscribe. Thanks.